about a young woman who fights a lot. It's not that she likes to fight, she's forced into it. This is how it was. I go, Mom, where's my puppy? I've looked everywhere for Dumbledore, in the basement, under the bed, in the laundry room, on the porch, and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen Dorgy? I want to give him a hug. Mom says, Caitlin, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. Can you tell me later, Mom? I want to watch Terminator 2. That's too old for you. Too much blood and crashing around. I'm eight now, Mom. I'm old enough to watch blood and crashing around. I'd rather you didn't. Don't worry. I'll probably like musicals too when I grow up. That's one of my earliest memories, said Caitlin. So you had a dog when you were a kid, Larry asked. Yeah, only the thing Mum wanted to tell me was that Dumbledore had been killed by a car. That must have been painful for you. Yeah, losing a pet is very hard. And your mother didn't like you to watch violent videos, but you loved them. Right. What else do you remember from your childhood? I was always in trouble for fighting with my sister. You're 18 now and still in trouble for fighting. With the law, though, now. What did you and your sister fight about? Everything. Who got to sit in the tall chair at the table? Who got the biggest piece of cake? Who could wear the blue sweater? Whose turn it was to lick the batter? Everything. And Mum always took her part. She always blamed me for being too rough or for starting trouble when that little bitch knew exactly how to con Mum into thinking she was the sweet, innocent one. How long does this interview last? An hour. Why, why do I have to talk to a probation officer anyway? We want to know how you're getting along, what kinds of problems you're having. Sometimes we can help. What? You help me? That's a laugh. Larry, I don't need any help. I can take care of myself. You certainly look after yourself in lots of ways, but the police are at your front door too often. That's what you're not taking care of very well right now. But I think you can change this. Change what? The problems you've been getting into with the law, the fighting. It's not my fault. Like I told the officer, I'm being picked on for no reason. I go to a club and some asshole comes up to me and... We don't use that language here. Some slut comes up to me then. Caitlin blew a thin stream of smoke from her cigarette in front of her face. This is me for nothing. I might be talking to her boyfriend, just talking, and she gets in my face. Tell me about some of the fights you've been in. Who started them, why, and what you did or didn't do. Like I said, last time I was just standing talking to this dude while the chick went to the washroom. She comes back and says, a guy at the end of the bar is looking for you. I knew she was conning me. Did you think she was the jealous type? Seen her around. Everybody knows she doesn't like anybody talking to her man. So, what did you do? I said, the guy that was looking for me already found me. Then she leaned in an inch from my face and told me to take off. I said I was just about to say farewell to the gentleman and started to shake his hand. But that was it. She popped me on the jaw. Well, I had to defend myself, so I landed a few good ones on her. Hurt my hand, too. The cop said I broke a rib when I kicked her on the floor. But it wasn't my fault. I told the cop I was just having a cordial conversation. She started it. She hit me first. So your mother blamed you, and now the cops are blaming you for stuff that's not your fault. Caitlin, who had been leaning forward in the padded chair with her elbow on her knee and her chin in her hand, sat back suddenly in the chair. There was a loud cracking sound. Larry started. Caitlin's chair tipped sideways, then collapsed. Caitlin's cigarette flew across the desk as she crashed on her back to the floor. She lay sprawled amid the broken pieces of chair, her bent knees going in one direction and her head and arms in the opposite. Larry bolted from behind the desk and over to her. He down beside her, not noting her startled, somewhat scared expression. Her eyes were open and she was trying to get up. Are you all right, he asked.
Nice to meet you, Caitlin. I'm Merle Lynn Bodak. You've had three meetings with Larry Anderson, and Larry referred you to me. Merlin, what are you, the police magician? I don't work for the police. I'm a counselor in private practice. People call me Merle. You were referred to me for anger management counseling. How do you feel about counseling? Why is something always wrong with me? Everyone needs a little help now and then. I don't see how you can help unless you can turn on some giant be nice to Caitlin switch. We'll work on that. Larry told me about the fights you had with your sister and your mother growing up, and with neighbors and others recently. Do you like fighting? No, I don't. But you have to stand up for yourself when someone does something to you. You can't just lie down or you'll be a doormat. Everyone will wipe their feet on you. Let's start by talking about how we're going to work together, Caitlin. Caitlin looks wary. We're going to look at five fights you've been in. We'll identify and talk about four things for each fight. What the fight was about, what you and others did, how you were feeling before, during, and after the fight, and what you liked and didn't like about the results. I already know all that. What use is that going to be? You know the answers to those questions, but I don't, and I would like to try to help you identify patterns in your behavior. My goal is insight, insight into when a fight is brewing, and your options for dealing with situations. I don't see how that can help. Helene was Mom's favorite. Mom always sided with her. End of story. Lightfoot should write a song. There was a contest on the radio this morning. Think up the next songs that Lightfoot should write and call them in. I came up with a few. What are they? The wreck of the credit system. Getting by on 875. When the lights brown out on Bay Street. Farewell, clean creeks and rivers. Cornbread cows, chicks, and antibiotics blues. Woman in the White House. Ontario on the wane aboard the have not plane. Amusing, Caitlin, but very serious at the same time. I see you're concerned about the economy, food, the environment, and equality for women. I'm concerned about a lot of things. Yes, you seem someone with a lot to offer to this world, but fights are getting in your way. I think insight will help. Let's pick out a fight you remember clearly from when you were young. We'll talk about it next week and see if we can get a good understanding of what happened and your feelings. Well, I remember the time Helene stole my doll and started coloring her mouth and got red crayon all over my doll's face. Mom blamed it on me. It was so unfair. That would be a good incident to start with. See you next Thursday. To be continued.